Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we're glad in it. And I'm so grateful that you joined us today, wherever you are in the world. I'm always excited and overwhelmed when I think about the many brothers and sisters who join us online from around the world. I'm praying that God gives you a great day, a great week. We're going to be ministering today from the Word of God, from the book of Numbers, where the children of Israel encountered a challenge in their journey as they had left Egypt and were on their way to the promised land, they reached a point of frustration. And I'm going to talk about that today because I'm sure in your life and in your journey, you have reached points of frustration. And what is the attitude that God wants us to have? What should you have when you face that? How do you overcome that? How do you make it past it? I believe this word will be a life-changing word and encouragement for you. Grab your Bibles and turn to Numbers. And I also want to uh, just let our friends in the Detroit, Michigan area know that this coming Friday I'm going to be ministering at the Perfecting Church Fellowship's uh, annual convocation with Bishop Marvin Winans. I'm honored. I'm speaking on this coming Friday to the men. And if you're anywhere in that vicinity, we'd love for you to join us in the Detroit, Michigan area. God bless you. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Father, we honor you this afternoon. We give you the praise. It's all due to you. You're worthy to be praised and worthy to be glorified. We honor you. We thank you. We thank you for what you've already done, the prayers you've already answered, the miracles you've already wrought. Thank you for being a great and an awesome God. We come today, God, praying for one another, calling out our brother, our sister's name. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would step into the domain of their lives. Whatever they stand in the need of, whatever their burden, whatever their challenge, whatever their stress is, work it out in the name of the Lord. Work miracles, deliver and heal and bring together, break shackles, rebuke the enemy, cancel out the schemes of the devil. Father, and let your Holy Spirit have free reign in our lives. We're praying that you would meet every need that your sons and daughters need, what we need every day. Forgive us of our sins, and God, I pray right now that whatever your sons and daughters need, you step in and work it out praying for our brothers and sisters that are not only in this building, but around the world who join us through the internet and other means. We pray, God, that you would speak to them. Just, just allow your word and your truth and your spirit to transcend space and location and do miracles in their life in the name of the Lord. Now, God, save somebody, reclaim somebody, restore somebody, plant somebody, feel somebody. You know what your sons and daughters need. We pray that you grant it in Jesus' name. And God, we give you the praise ahead of time. We believe it's already done. Put a hedge around this place. Bind every demon from hell and every distracted spirit and have your way in the marvelous name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. grab your Bibles and open your Bibles to the book of Numbers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. And I say that for your person sitting next to you because I know you know where, ex, where Numbers is. And I want you to go to chapter 11, Numbers chapter 11 that Reverend Queen has already read, but I'm going to read it again. For the people who came in late, somebody say amen. amen. Beginning at verse 1, now the people complained. Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and then Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place Taborah because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept 
again and said, who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions and the garlic. But now, verse six, our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Verse six says, there is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Look at your neighbor and say, nothing but manna. <laughs> Tell them on the other side, nothing but manna, nothing but manna. You can be seated. Numbers, let me give you a little history so you can understand the text, so you can understand, the, I'm going to set the stage for this text. The book of Numbers is, it picks up the story of the children of Israel as they departed from Egypt and were on their way to the promised land. Exodus, the book of Exodus talks about the exit and the book of Numbers picks up and tells the story of them Traveling. It's called the book of Numbers because it is during this time that Moses counted the people, and that's why they call it the book of Numbers. But there is a problem that has encountered the children of Israel while they're in this journey, and I need to tell you that the problem they had at this place is the same problem that a lot of people are having today in their journey with God. And the problem is, verse 1, that the people complain. I need to let that sink in for a moment because y'all might not want to admit it, but somebody on your row, though they may look like they got it all together, there's some things that they are angry about, some things going on in their life that they are complaining about. I know y'all might not want to admit it or be truthful about it but if the truth were to be told there's some things or some things are going on or some things have happened in the journey of your life that you are not necessarily pleased about and you have complained about it in this particular passage numbers 11 in the first verse it says the people complained they they were complaining about a whole number of things they were upset and mad and they began to complain and the text says the problem with their complaint is that God heard their complaint. Now I know you probably ain't talked to nobody about what you're upset about, but I'm here to tell you that even though you don't talk nobody, to nobody about it, God hears your complaints that's going on in your head. God heard their complaint and it, verse one says, it, it displeased the Lord, the Lord, for the Lord heard it and his anger was aroused, God got angry. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. God sent a fire and some of the people died. Y'all better be glad that God ain't sending fire in the camps. People cried out to Moses, verse 2, and the Lord prayed, and, Mo, and then Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. God shut it down, gave them another opportunity. And they called the name of that place Taborah because the fire of the Lord had burnt among them. And the problem is, here's what I need to talk about, because they were, they were complaining and upset and mad in the midst of their journey because they, they, were, they were upset about a lot of things. And then when we get to verse number uh, four, well, let me back up for a second. Maybe I'm moving a little bit too fast. Somebody say, take your time, Pastor. <laughs> This the twelve. This the twelve o'clock service. I can take no time. Look at your neighbor and say, "You shouldn't have came to this service because he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna stop preaching until he gets done." Go ahead, tell the neighbor. They've been wandering around in the wilderness, and they will wander around in the wilderness for forty years. 
never make it to the promised land for take them at least 40 years before they get there. And so they're upset. They're traveling around, going around the same in circles, over around the same ground over and over again under the leadership of Moses, and they're, they're complaining. And, 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 and uh, verse number four says that they wanted to know who's going to give us something to eat. See, there was no stores there, no stack trucks. There was no Wegmans. There was no Safeways. No place to give food, and they, they were getting upset, and they were they were they were getting disturbed and bothered. And as a matter of fact, uh, later on in this chapter and in Exodus, it talks about the fact that God gave them. They complained about the meat. God gave them so much meat at one point that they had meat coming out their teeth. Uh, but they're, they're, they're in a point and a posture of complaining. And in verse, and I want to talk about this complaint because something fueled their complaint. Somebody say something fueled their complaint. Say something fueled it. And, and here's what fueled it is in verse 4. Follow me. Verse 4 says, Now the mixed multitude were among them yielded to intense craving. They, their complaining was fueled by a mixed multitude. That I, I've read this passage a number of times, but I slipped over that point. I missed it when I read it, uh, and I wanted to know who the mixed multitude was, and it made me to understand as I'd done my research and my study that there were some people in the group that were not Jews. When they left Egypt, some of the Egyptians came with them. And all of the Egyptians who came with them did not have the same faith that they had, did not have the same commitment that they had, did not have the same confidence that God, that God gave, and they weren't even slaves. They had an alternative agenda as to why they came. Y'all need to know that everybody who's in your camp is not, doesn't have the same faith that you have. All of the people in your circle don't believe like you believe. They don't trust God like you trust God. And they can't trust God because they don't have the same story that you have. They haven't seen God open up miracle doors for you. They, 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 they don't know why you trust God and believe God and have confidence in God. They don't know why you pay your tithes, why you go to church on Sunday, why you go to prayer service, why you come to Bible study, why you're in the discipleship group. They don't know why you believe God because they haven't seen God do for them like God, what God has done for you. And it's important that you have the knowledge that everybody, matter of fact, that's the first problem. They got, the, here's my first point. They were discouraged because they had other people in their camp. And that's my first point. They were discouraged by other people. Somebody say, you can't get discouraged by other people. Tell your neighbor, you can't. Some of the people, some of the people in their camp had never been slaves. And some of them in that camp had never been fueled by faith. Some of them had selfish ambition. Some of them, they, they were in the crowd, but they were not believers. So there's a, there was, it was a mixed multitude. You got to be careful who you hang out with. That's what I need to talk about right now. Be careful who you get counsel from. Be careful who you talk to. And they found themselves in a condition and in a position where they were uh, listening and, and to these other voices and these voices start complaining and so this means crowd made them say who's going to give us meat to eat and so they complained but here's the second problem that they had here's what caused them to be complainers y'all ever met complainers y'all know anybody who's a complainer whining all the time about everything And verse number five tells me the second problem they had. They not only had other people that discouraged them, they had a problem that they, verse number five says, we remember. We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. 
they remember. They, they, they wanted, they started desiring to go back to their past. So they got discouraged by other people and now they starting to desire their past. I need to spend a moment talking about that because some of y'all are discouraged in life and frustrated and complaining because you, you keep going back and thinking about where you came from. And, and so they, they are pondering and thinking about their past and they say, we remember the fish that we ate in Egypt. We remember the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlics. They remember all the good stuff they had, but they failed to remember that what came along with the good stuff was some drama. And some of you are remembering Remembering your past that you remember you you are failing to remember the drama that came along with it You remember the good times you had with your boyfriend, but you forgot that he used to beat the snot out of you too Y'all ain't got to say nothing y'all ain't got to say man look straight ahead. Nobody know I'm talking about you yeah, you had a lot of money, but you got that money from drugs and from wrong ways and from sleeping with a thousand men. You, you keep thinking about from where you bought you from, but they forgot that while they thought about the food that they ate, they forgot that they were slaves. And some of you remember where you came from, but you forgot that you were slaves back then. You were in bondage to some habits that you couldn't break yourself from. You were connected with some stuff that you couldn't get out of. And now that God has brought you up out of it, the devil is trying to get you to go back from where God brought you from. And I need somebody to holler out and say, I don't care how good it was, I ain't going back to where God brought me out of. Oh, I wish I had a high five. Somebody could praise the Lord with me and say, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I ain't going back to slavery. I'm not going back to drugs. I ain't going back to living a horrid life. I'm not going back to the behavior that I used to have. I'm not going back to lying and stealing and living a horrific life. I will not go back. free now. Ain't nothing like being free. <laughs> Can't compare not having shackles on me. Nah, ain't nothing like being able to be free to worship God with no guilt down on me. Ain't nothing like it. So you want to go back to Egypt? You want to go back to that lifestyle? You want to go back to that? No. And they're complaining. They're, they're complaining and they're remembering from where they came from. And I'm here to tell y'all, don't forget that God brought you out of a horrific, horrible, devastating life. I have anybody here that don't mind testifying that God brought you. Oh, somebody say he brought me out. He, he delivered me. He loosed my shackles. I thought I would never be free. I thought I would never come out. I'm free now and I'm not going back. Somebody high five your neighbor say, you can't pay me to go back. I wish I had a praying crowd that didn't mind taking about 30 seconds and giving God a shout from where he brought you from.
They desired. They say we remember. And that's what gets a lot of you in trouble. You keep remembering. And, and the problem with remembering, I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. The problem with remembering is that remembering tells you the fun times without letting you see the bad times. drugs fail to let you see all the people you had to hurt and steal from to get the high. We remember, and I'm here to tell you, I'd rather be free living in an efficiency than to be a slave living in a mansion. Somebody, somebody told me after the eight o'clock service, they went to the African American Museum and they, they didn't take but one picture the whole time they were there. And they showed me the one picture that they took. And the one picture that they took was a, was a statement that a person said, I don't remember the person's name, but the person said, if I was given a choice to remain a slave and live for old age or get free for one day and then die, the person say, I'll enjoy my day of freedom. So here's what they said. I'm, I'm almost finished. They, 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 they were discouraged by other people. They desired their past. Y'all see my, D, my, D, my D's and my P's? See, I got to point these things out to y'all because y'all won't see them. And I, I worked hard to alliterate these points. And then they, number three, they depreciated the provisions. They, they did not value and appreciate the provisions that God had made for them. Because they said in verse 3, look at what they said. Our whole being is dried up, and there is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. So, so here's the deal. Let me, I'm almost finished. They... <laughs> Man, I want to run around this building when I think about this passage here. They woke up in the morning. They're out in the middle of nowhere. They're out in the middle of the wilderness. They ain't no, they, I told y'all, they ain't no safe ways, they ain't no giants, they ain't no Wegmans. And yet every day when they woke up, when they reached outside their tent, God had made available to them manna. And they said, all we got is nothing but this manna. That's all we got, this, this manna. They, they were tired. They had manna cake, manna souffle, manna pasta, manna pizza. This, there was manna, manna, manna. 
and they got tired of it. And it's, it's tragic here that here they, here they have before them, God has given them supernaturally from out of heaven manna and they got tired of it. And I, here's, here's what I'm trying to tell y'all. You can look at life two ways. You can say, we ain't got nothing but this manna. Or you can say, we ain't got nothing but manna. Y'all don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. When I look back over my life and the miracles that God has worked for me, all I can say is, ain't nothing but man. <laughs> Somebody high by your name and say, the miracles he's wrought, the doors he's opened, the prayers he's answered, the victory he's given, it ain't nothing but man. <laughs> To you. I know life ain't gone the way you want it. Things might not have been all the way exactly the way you want it to be. But guess what? When you look back over your life, I know you've been living in the same place for 20 years, but God provided for you. Your rent got paid. Your mortgage got paid. You had food on your table, clothes on your back. You to this building in 2007. It costs $62 million. We, we, we had paid for half of it before we had our first service in the building. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, that ain't nothing but man. We're building a family life center right now. June 23rd, we're gonna dedicate it. It's gonna cost a little bit more than we thought. It's gonna cost $25 million. We got the cash. Somebody look at your neighbor, say nothing but manna. Y'all ain't got to shout, I'm shouting for me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, nothing but manna.
here's what I know about everybody in this building. I don't know your name. I don't know where you live. But here's what I know. Somewhere in your life, God gave you some manna. <laughs> And somebody ought to take a moment and give him praise. You ought to give him a shout of praise. Say, God, I thank you. Thank you for my manna. Thank you for my miracle. Thank you for opening the door. Thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you for my provision. Thank you. Forgive me for complaining. Forgive me for finding fault. Forgive me for being ungrateful. I'm so grateful. say that ain't nothing but man <laughs> somebody high five your neighbor with your attitude say ain't nothing but man Thank <laughs> you. 
everything, for everything, everything, for everything, everything, to God. I'm going to give you a real living analogy for you to walk out of this building with today. I noticed about 25 minutes ago while I was preaching, I felt some liquid come down to hit me on my head. And I saw some liquid fall over here, meaning that something was leaking up there. Then it dawned on me that we've lost our air condition. Yeah, the air condition's out. Now I could choose to complain that the air conditioning is out, or I can thank God that I have a building that even needs air conditioning to be fixed. I got a building that even has an air conditioning in the building. Now, some of you here today, maybe, maybe uh, you don't realize what God has done for you. He has made it possible for you to even be alive today. He spared your life. You should have been dead. You should have lost your life, but he spared you. You know why he spared you? Because he wants to save you today. And my, my assignment is to beckon you to come and give your heart to the Lord Jesus right now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Accept Jesus. He died on the cross so your sins could be forgiven. And he wants to say. I worship you. I worship you. Yeah, come on right now. Unsaved, backslidden. You, you need to rededicate. You need assurance. Man, man, man. So proud of you. So proud of you. Come on right now. You need, you need to rededicate. You need a church home. You want to join us? You already saved, but you want to join right now. Right now, this moment is the time for you to come. Come on and say yes to you. He spared your life for such a time as this. You're unsaved, you're backslidden, you've never accepted him, or you're started, but you drifted away, or you're, 
you have questions you want answered, or you're already saved, you want to join this church. This here is a good church for you to be a part of. Shout for these souls. the Lord a shout one more time for this. All right. Um, I, you know, we have to bless babies today, so we need to get counselors to come and take the place of these ministers that are at this altar here today. So um, if you're an altar counselor, if you could come take the place of the ministers, that'd be great, greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. I'm so proud of all of y'all. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you in the back, find out why you came, give you scriptures, pray with you, give you clarity of direction of what you need to, what you need to do to go to where God wants you to go. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these souls today, these lives. I pray that you touch them, forgive them, cleanse them, plant them, fill them, O oh Lord. Break every shackle in their life and have your way. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs> 